Hey y'all and welcome back to my channel. In this tutorial, we are going to be distressing this tumbler, adding on some new florals from Gracefully Created, and I'm also going to show you how I mix and apply my fast set epoxy. So let's jump right in. We are using a 16 ounce travel mug from the Steel Magnolia, and I have used hammered copper spray paint from Rust-Oleum to give this a base coat. We're going to apply our glitter using the epoxy method and I have about five milliliters of DIY epoxy speedy PD, which is their fast set. And I have put about a milliliter on this tumbler and just working my way around. When you are using a tumbler with a handle, make sure you get into those little crevices around the handles and pay really good attention to that, especially if you are putting glitter all over the tumbler. So the first thing that I do is go straight to that handle, make sure that I did get epoxy all over it and apply my glitter. Once I have that handle done, I just dumped it all over the rest of the tumbler because we are using one single glitter. And this color is Nomad from PDB Creative Studio. It's an absolutely beautiful copper glitter, and if you don't have it in your fall collection already, you definitely need to grab some. Now, normally I would use a piece of like printer paper or parchment paper to press down my glitter. This is a .015 cut. It is a fine XL. So I do still press this down because it gives me better coverage on my first epoxy layer and I feel like gives the glitter a little bit more dimension and it helps avoid getting more micro bubbles trapped in between your glitter pieces. So instead of using the parchment paper or printer paper, I'm just going around with a gloved hand and tapping that glitter down. I'm being careful not to apply too much pressure or go too fast because I don't want to move my glitter and I don't want to put like little imprints of my fingers on the tumbler. So I'm just lightly tapping around, pressing some of that glitter down and really focusing on that handle. I hate double hate sanding handles so I always make sure that my glitter is extra flat before I move into applying my epoxy. Now for this tumbler, we are using DIY Epoxy's Speedy Petey. I do have their regular epoxy, which is Artisan over to the right. I have that on here because the mixing process is the same. The only thing that is different is the cure time and the work time that you have. If you are a new beginner i definitely suggest using a slower curing epoxy which would be artisan and this would still be beneficial to you because again the mixing process is the same i have two separate measuring cups and for this tumbler i am using 15 milliliters of resin a 15 milliliters of resin b my epoxy when i pour is room temperature my room temperature is 75 degrees and the reason that I put them in two separate cups is for one, if I put a little bit too much in there, I don't waste an entire cup of an epoxy. And two, it's best to put them in separate cups because when you do heat it up, it is going to expand a little bit. So it's going to appear that you have more than what you poured and that can throw your ratio off. So if I poured 15 milliliters of resin A and then heated it up with my heat gun, just as I did, then it may look like 18 milliliters, throwing off your resin B when you pour on top. So putting them in separate cups helps you get your measurement correct the first time, and then you can mix them together. So I poured my resin A into B, I'm going to mix that just for a bit, making sure that I scrape the sides really well, and then I'm going to pour it back into that resin A cup. You want to make sure that you scrape the sides and get every last bit of resin out of that cup that you can, and then mix that for about two to three minutes until it is clear. If you're like me and you mix extra fast, 
then it will be a little difficult to see if it is clear or not. Just make sure you mix it for at least a good solid two minutes very quickly and you should be good to go. Also, I'm using a stir stick from DIY Epoxy. I'll list those below for y'all because that does help in eliminating some of those micro bubbles, even if you're a fast mixer like me. Now, I have my new turner from Dino's Tumbler Turners, and I just had to show you how easy that quick connect was. I'm absolutely in love with this thing. I have six turner arms in 18 inches of space which is incredible for my small room and I will have a review for this new turner out for y'all very very soon so be on the lookout for that if you're in the market for a new turner okay now for the epoxy application for this specific tumbler since it had a handle you saw that I went very very lightly around the handle and the bottom of the handle. You don't want to gloop that up on the handle. Otherwise, when you torch or apply heat, it is going to run down those handles and create little bubbles at the bottom of them. This is a fast set, so you have to work quickly. You don't want to allow your epoxy to sit in bubbles to rise. You slap that right onto your tumbler and get to work as soon as you're finished mixing. And then once you have applied it to your tumbler, then run over with a torch to pop any of those micro bubbles you may have created while mixing or applying. And I wanted to show you the time when I applied this. It was 6.03 a.m. And then we're going to come back and turn our turners off at 6.39 a.m. So in just a little over 30 minutes, I was able to run my fingers down this tumbler. It was dry to the touch and turn it off. And man, this epoxy is just incredible. I love the dry time of it. And the fact that it can be used as a top coat as well is just an added bonus. I just flashed my watch again and it was 1111. So a little over five hours, I did sand the top and bottom rim with 400 grit sandpaper. I didn't want to use something too gritty because I don't want my paint to get stuck in any grooves, but I did use 400 grit sandpaper only five hours after that initial coat of epoxy. And mapping out your spots on your tumbler before you spray paint to distress is nothing new, but it is a huge time saver stress saver and it, it really helps you map out the tumbler before you go and remove any of that paint and make any mistakes. So I'm just taking some painter's tape and ripping it in half and just sort of making rough shapes out of it. It doesn't matter honestly if it's perfectly straight because you can distress it even more once you use your acetone and alcohol to wipe off some of the spray paint. But for me, I'm just breaking that into strips and really just going back and forth from the top to the bottom of the tumbler and adding on some of those areas that I want to show through. Now I will tell you that this works best if you have some matte spray paint. I did not have any on hand, so I do have a gloss black from Cryline and Hunter Green from Rust-Oleum. I spray painted that and the Hunter Green from Rust-Oleum just did its own crazy thing and got 
sort of like lime green. So I had to go back in with sage from Rust-Oleum to cover some of that up. Now I did notice as I was removing some of the spray paint that that bright green did not show through. So I'm assuming once it dried, it dried darker, but I did not want to risk applying epoxy to this and it just going lime green on me. So anyway, black and sage <laughs> is the two colors that we ended up using. And once that dried, I just went in and removed all of that painter's tape to expose my pretty glitter. Make sure this is completely dry before moving into this distressing step so you don't damage your spray paint and have to start over. But I have some 91% alcohol. Really, any kind is going to help. We're just using it to clean up and not remove paint. And I have some painter's acetone. I'm putting that on a paper towel just at the end of it and I'm going to go around the edges of those exposed spots and remove a little bit of paint exposing that black underneath. Now we are going for a distressed look. We don't want clean lines, we don't want blurry lines. So when you are applying the acetone to your paper towel or whatever you decide to use. You can also use a Q-tip. That helps with precision areas, sort of like around this handle, but I just decided to continue with the paper towel. But when you are removing it, you don't want the paper towel to be saturated. You want it to be damp with the acetone so it gives you more control and you don't have big globs of areas removed at once. Now, as you are removing some of this paint, it is going to look a little splotchy around those areas where the paint underneath has smeared. So we have some like smearing of the black paint. Don't worry about that. That's why we have the acetone and that's going to help us clean that up since it's thin areas of paint rather than removing layers of paint as we're doing now.
Once I had finished removing all of that paint that I felt I needed, then I went in with a clean paper towel and again, you just want it damp. You do not want it oversaturated with your alcohol. And I just damped that with some alcohol and went over the entire tumbler, cleaning up the edges around those rough spots. I wanted to add a little bit more distressing to this, so I grabbed a piece of 220 grit sandpaper, wet it, and then very, very lightly went over those areas that were still spray painted to expose a little bit more of that black. I tried to avoid going in those glitter areas except around the edges in a couple of spots because if you apply a lot of pressure to this, and it grabs a hold of your spray paint and makes those sand grooves into your glitter areas. It's going to drag the spray paint down into those grooves right across your glitter. And you will be able to see that whenever you apply your epoxy. It will be kind of like blurry, murky looking because you won't be able to fully remove the paint down in those grooves without sanding with a finer grit. And once I finished that, I just took the alcohol once again and went over the entire tumbler. Got that really nice and clean. I allowed it to dry just for a couple of minutes since we used so much alcohol and acetone and then popped it on my turner and gave it one coat of DIY Speedy PD Facet Epoxy. So we are still in day one on this tumbler. I wanted to show you a complete timeline of how I finished this one up in a day, but I forgot to keep showing you my watch every time I started recording. So these are the new beautiful sunflower florals from Gracefully Created. Y'all know my love for sunflowers and these are absolutely beautiful. They're bright enough to use for summer, but they have that fall tone to them so you can use them on fall designs like this as well. Now I really didn't want to circle around the handle and since we have some petals on those flowers I just cut around the last one that was on this little strip of flowers and placed that on the tumbler first and then wrapped these all the way around. Once I got to the handle on the other side I just figured out where I needed to trim around those other florals, trim those out, and then pressed it down. Now, most of the time I give y'all free files in my Brittany Barnes Boutique Tumblr art group, but I have had lots that have questioned on how I make them. So I'm gonna show you how I made this file. I am using the Fonto app and I went over to add a shape and just added this square border. I just made it large enough to fit the full page and then I went I tapped over the image and selected stroke and reduced that down to 11. Our decal is going to say life happens, coffee helps, and I wanted to use two different fonts. My biggest 
flaw in creating any of my decals is finding the right font. So I just scrolled through, tested out a bunch of different fonts until I found the one that I liked. Once you add in your text, all you have to do is tap over your words and then it will give you a list of things that you can do like resize, you can change the color, and even the distance that the letters are from each other or the wording underneath them. It does take a while to get used to this app, but I have used it for the past two and a half years, so it works for me. I resized all of my lettering to the size that I wanted, centered them up by clicking the move icon and then clicking on center. And then I resized that box that we placed in the beginning just to fit perfectly around them and then hit the button in the bottom right corner to upload to my phone. These do not have transparent backgrounds, but that has never bothered me because I have had my Cricut from way in the beginning when the original come out. And those who have had theirs that long, you know all about removing the backgrounds from images that you found on Google. <laughs> So I'm just used to removing the backgrounds from my images rather than having it done for me unless I get my images from Etsy or Creative Fabrica. Now, if you have saw any of my past tutorials, you know how much I love TechRap Craft Vinyl. And I did buy some copper textured specifically for this project and then I could not find it. I have no clue where it's at. So I had to resort to some old Cricut vinyl that I had and y'all, this stuff gave me so many issues. It didn't cut right. It didn't weed right. It didn't want to come off the paper backing. And then it bubbled when I put it on my tumbler and it looked horrible. I was annoyed. And I also did not like that square border. I thought it would be cute, but it definitely wasn't. So I cut it again, went through the trouble of weeding this horrible vinyl once again. And I have my decal cut to 3.25 inches. I think I should have went down to three because I still feel like this was a little bit too big for this cup. But anyway, I cut my initial image to 3.25, did an offset of 0.025, and then the copper offset was 0.035. And even still putting this on a second time, this vinyl still bubbled up in the back for whatever reason. So I had to take my craft knife and go over a couple of areas just to cut them and help them lay a little flat. And then I gave that some time to really get stuck down to the cup before I went in with my final layers of epoxy. And what I love about having these quick connect arms on my new Dino's tumbler turner is that I can apply my epoxy off of my turner and then pop it on very quickly and turn my turner on. I got a compact turner, so it is stacked and they are close together. So if I'm working on big projects or ones with handles, this gives me the ability to work away from the turner, have plenty of room to move around. I can see it in a better light and then pop it on my turner when I am done. And here is the end result. Just look at how bright and vibrant those beautiful sunflowers are. I cannot wait until they launch. These will be released on July 4th, 2022 at gracefullycreatedccd.com. Make sure you check below for the group information in case you want to join and get updates on the exact time that they will be released. And of course, I will share that link as well when they are dropped in our Brittany Barnes Boutique Tumblr Art Facebook group. I hope I answered all of your epoxy mixing and application questions. If you have any more, drop them down in the comments below. I will answer them the best that I can, and we may actually have a full dedicated video for epoxy mixing and applications and the different types in the very near future. That is all for today. Thank you all so much, and we'll see you next time.